Good evening. Please rise to welcome the Dean, distinguished guests, faculty, and students of Columbia University's School of International and Public Affairs.
Please take your seats. Please welcome our distinguished dean, Karen Yarhi Milo. Hello, and welcome, everyone. And to all the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. I want to welcome all of our distinguished faculty, students, alumni, friends, family, and loved ones. I could not be more honored to present before you the School of International and Public Affairs Class of 2023. Congratulations. You are truly an exceptional bunch. Each of you has traveled a unique and remarkable path to get to this important milestone in your career. You hail from 70 countries. Talk about a global school. Yes. But, but none, none of you would be here without the support of your family, your friends, loved ones, and mentors. So let's please give them a round of applause. I also, yes, they deserve it, that's right. They I also want to thank our dedicated faculty and staff who serve as your mentors and advisors, your role models and muses. We salute their service, sacrifice, and commitment to academic excellence. As a graduate of CPAM, you are joining a truly global community that spans 153 countries across the globe. One of the greatest honors I've had this past year as dean is running into people whenever I travel anywhere in the world who introduce themselves to me and say, I am SIPA too. I went to SIPA. And to see the beaming smile on their face, to feel their pride for this school, that is the best part of my job. Now, I have some idea what's going on in your heads right now, because two decades ago, I sat in your same seat, and so I know that graduation day can bring on a strange mix of emotion. On one hand is the thrill of the moment the pride of graduating from this August University, the feeling that nobody, nobody can ever take this accomplishment away from you. On the other hand, for me, there was an anxiety of what comes next. As I stand here before you, I recognize in your eyes and on your faces that same range of emotion. This is a such a precious, this is such a precious period in all of your lives. Cherish it. And I hope you all look back fondly on your time spent here. But I also know that SIPA is now your family. And you are always welcome back. I know this because I came back. I waited for the perfect moment to come back to this community to the place that launched my career, and I hope you feel the same connection as I did. You are always welcome home anytime. When I took out at the sea, when I look out at the sea of blue robes and all the flags and all the talent in front of me, I am inspired. 
I am hopeful and I'm amazed by your energy and passion for international politics. And boy, does the world need you all now. If ever there was a time for new thinking and fresh ideas, this is it. Think about all that we've seen since, since many of you first arrived on campus. We've emerged from a once in a century pandemic. We saw a major war break out in the heart of Europe and we've seen the rollout of a powerful yet scary new AI technologies that will transform societies. But it is also, it's also a moment of opportunity, a chance for a new generation of creative problem solvers and social entrepreneurs like yourself to make a difference and have your voices heard. As you well know, we live in a deeply polarized and uncertain times. And to meet this moment, we need local to global perspectives. We need problem solvers because so many of the global challenges we face are also local ones. We need future leaders who will not self-censor themselves, but will engage with the other side and listen to points of views they disagree with. We need to instill deeper sense of service and giving back whether to one's local community or country. And we need a greater diversity of voices at the table so that we can get outside our echo chamber and avoid an America-centric approach to crafting solutions. Here at SIPA, we draw our strengths from the diversity of our people and the range of perspectives they champion. I want you to carry a sense of pride graduating from a school that is busily reinventing itself to meet the moment we're in, so that we're able to not just respond to the problems of today, but also anticipate the problems of tomorrow. That is why we have reoriented our school curriculum around a set of five global policy challenges, which are climate and sustainable development, geopolitical stability, inclusive prosperity and macroeconomic stability, democratic resilience, and technology and innovation. Focusing on these areas will allow us to offer even more innovative policy solutions and make our scholarships even more impactful. It will help us train and teach the next generation of future thought leaders, activists, policymakers. When you come back, you will be proud of the extraordinary work and changes we are doing. So whatever your concentration or specialization at SIPA was, whatever your background, now is your moment to dream big and to give back to the world. I know you will, I have no doubt. Sitting before me are future diplomats, heads of state, global entrepreneurs, investors, inventors, that will save lives, spark empathy, and make the world a better place. But before you do, for the last time, look around you. Remember the friendships you forged the relationship you've built. Remember those late night study sessions or random conversation you had over drinks after a prov provocative seminar or a brown bag. For better or worse, if you're like me, you will still wake up to nightmares that you forgot to submit something <laughs> for a course, yes, or that you failed an exam I wish I could say those, well, those fears go away right after graduation. They don't, but give it a second. 
But over time, over time, you will remember your time at SIPA fondly as the place you grew as a person, as a global citizen, and as a problem solver. SIPA students, it's time to spread your wings. It's time, it is, it's time to go out of the world and write your next chapter. We will be cheering you on every step of the way. And we will be right here for you when you seek a source of solace, a haven for renewal, and a home away from home. Thank you and congratulations. now I would like now to recognize a number of individuals both faculty and students for their achievements and contributions to our community honoring these recipients is one of the highest the highlights I'm sorry of our ceremony each year I encourage you to consult your program for more information about the various rewards congratulations first to two winners of the SIPA Award for Outstanding Teaching, Professor Reet Agarwala and Professor Daniel Nauyuks. to recognizing our student award winners. There are quite a few, so I ask that you refrain from further applause until I finish announcing all of the year's honorees. I know it's gonna be hard. The winner of the CAA Campbell Award for Leadership and Columbia Spirit is Zainab Abdi. I'm sorry. I know. I <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. That, that was wonderful and an example of what we're not going to do in the next time. <laughs> the Dr. Susan Aurelia Gilson Award for Human Values and International Affairs goes to two of our Capstan team for their Capstan workshop on pathways to reintegration of former combatants into civilian life, we recognize Julia Jolstrom Agoya, Nisha, Nisha Karki, Hamida Kanbari, Mayan Sasher, Daryl Matthew, and Seta Set. Okay. Also, Giddelson Award winners for the Capstan Project Rethinking Humanitarian Action in Lebanon, we recognize Allison. The Dakian, Sarah Gathro, Dorothy Khan, Iman Karimu, Kate Knight, Basim Malaki, uh, Nitrik uh, Norwood, and Samuel and Samuel Teichman. The winner of the Harvey Picker Prize. I know it's hard. I know. The winner of the Harvey Picker Prize for Public Service is Kumar Vivek. Next, next, <laughs> you're killing me. Next is the Isaac Anderson Rauch Award for Excellence in the Capstone Projects. For the project, investing in waste to energy technologies to meet Nigeria's growing waste challenges, we recognize Moselle Trifin Ambarita, Paige Bradford, Denise Bravenek, Lord Deschallender, uh, Bavaya Ja, Clara Lee, Amber Liao, and Kedar Pramana, and Quay Ka, Quay, I'm sorry, Quay Ki Quay Nor Ijua. 
Our Leas Priory Award for Progressive Sustainability goes to the Capstone Project on assessing the impact of climate shocks on low-income women workers in India. And we congratulate uh, Zoya Sajik Dakam, Miloni Sapan Doshi, Marisa Dinkal McKesson, Anjali Nair, Spencer Kenneth Nash, and Shalini Rao. And finally, and finally, we honor the winners of the Raphael Smith Memorial Prize, whose essays will be published in SIPA's magazine this fall. Kevin Brunelli and, and Audrey Hatfield. Winner, please stand and please join me in saluting these talented graduates. It is now my distinct privilege and honor to introduce today's featured speaker. I cannot think of anybody who better embodies the mission statement and spirit of this school more than Maria Ressa. Born Born in Manila, but raised just a few hours south of here in New Jersey, Maria studies at Princeton University. After since working at CNN and other news organizations, she co-founded Rappler in 2012 as a Facebook page. It soon evolved to become a major news site during one of the darker spells of Philippines history. Thanks to Rappler, Maria rose to fame as a prominent press critique of the former regime of Rodrigo Duterte, whose drug war and repressive tactics led to the disappearance and death of thousands. For her courageous work, she was arrested several times, and for her fearless pursuit of the truth, she was awarded and became the first Filipina winner of the Nobel Peace Prize in 2021. <laughs> Maria Ressa published several superb books. I was particularly moved by this passage from her new book, How to Stand Up to a Dictator. In it, she writes, Without facts, you can't have truth. Without truth, you can't have trust. Without all three, we have no shared reality and democracy as we know it, and all meaningful human endeavors are dead. There is perhaps no person on this planet more committed to the defense of democracy than Maria Ressa. This is why I am so thrilled to also announce she will be joining us at SIPA at our new Institute of Global Politics as a distinguished fellow starting this fall. <laughs> During her time, I know. And I'm sorry you will not be here, but as I said, you always come home. During her time here at SIPA, she will also be spearheading a new project to examine the role of artificial intelligence on democracy. It's hard to think of a timelier or more important issues for us to confront. We are honored and privileged to have her speak to the class of 2023 today, Please join me in welcoming Maria Ressa.
it's what happens when you're short. You get much taller immediately. Thank you. Thank you so much. My gosh, Dean Taran Yari Milo, the members of the board, the faculty, staff, family, and my God, hello, class of 2023. It's so wonderful to see you filing in and to see your faces today and to see your family and friends. It's, it is impossible to be here, as, as Karen said. And you know, whatever she said, ditto. Because that was. <laughs> but thank you so much for inviting me to speak with you at this existential moment, right? And I use that word very deliberately. Um, I was with Al Gore a few weeks ago, and we were talking climate, right? Yes, climate. But he and I agreed that it is impossible to solve the climate problem until we deal with, he called this the democracy crisis, which begins with the corruption of our information ecosystem. And what is the primary problem, right? Because you've heard too many, our public debate simmers around a lot of different things, but it's actually only one choice that was made by the tech companies that connects all of us, right? What's that one choice? When lies faced that are laced with anger and hate spread at least six times faster than those really boring facts. It literally, this is what delivers us. You guys watch Stranger Things. It delivers us to the down under. We're literally in the down under. Everything seems kind of familiar, but it's covered with muck and goo, right? And we're all trying to find our way to get to the right side up. Um, well, <laughs> all of this is pumping what I call toxic sludge in the Nobel lecture through all of us, right? This is what is pumping between us, tearing apart our shared reality, destroying facts, truth, and trust. This insidious manipulation of our emotions, they get to our biology, this insidious manipulation of our emotions for profit is partly why all around the world we are electing illiberal leaders democratically. And after they each crush the institutions of democracy in each of our countries. This happened in the Philippines in 2016 in about six months. Six months, it's short. After they do that in each of our countries, they then reach out and they ally together. Ann Applebaum called it autocracy inc. I call it kleptocracy inc, right? Power and money. Of course, today, you know, we have elections in Thailand and in Turkey. Here's the problem, right? If you don't have integrity of facts, how can you have integrity of elections? And yet, like in Brazil, civil society, the voters, everything comes down on us, and we claw our way back to try to have elections that matter. In the Nobel lecture, I compared the tech company's business model to the atom bomb that exploded in our information ecosystem. What happened after that happened, right? When the atom bomb exploded, the United Nations was created, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the School of International and Public Affairs, right? This was created to try to prevent humanity from destroying ourselves when policy frameworks, negotiations, and shared values crafted a path forward. In Southeast Asia, we call it enlightened self-interest. But something changed. Technology companies, which triggered the doomsday clock for democracy, tells us we are now in the last two minutes of democracy. Last two minutes, right? 90 elections from January this year until the end of 2024. 2024 is a tipping point where you have Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim population, India, the world's largest democracy, and the United States. If nothing significant is done, 
we will step off the cliff. Oh, man, I'm sorry to be a downer as you join us. <laughs> but most of this was because of our first encounter with artificial intelligence, with AI. That's the rudimentary machine learning that is literally curating our lives, right? Each of us having our own individualized news feed. I mean, you know, when, I, when this came out in 2014 that we were each going to get our own news feed, while well, everybody was like rejoicing, I kept thinking, what happens to the public sphere, right? You know what they call a place where everyone has their own realities? An insane asylum. In my book, How to Stand Up to a Dictator, two groups abdicated responsibility for protecting our public sphere. You've heard me say this, the American tech companies primarily, right? But now you've got to add TikTok. Um, and then the democratic governments that, are, that should have protected us. The Cambridge Analytica whistleblower reminded me that a toaster to get inside your home will go through more regulatory and safety checks than the software that is living with you in your pocket, right? That is taking everything you post, your connections, your emotions, your dreams, your hopes, your fears. This is addictive software, and it is rewiring our brains, insidiously manipulating our biology. It is what we all have in common, regardless of nation, culture, or lang language. And it is changing the way we think and the way we act. This isn't a free speech issue. It's a distribution issue. It is engineering oversight, right? Assuring every one of us that Butler Library behind us is not gonna fall down when we're inside. It won't collapse. And if it did, then we would know who we can hold to account. There are policies and laws in place to stop the impunity. Well. We have yet to address the cascading failures of this first generation, our first encounter with AI, when power and money struck again. This time, releasing generative AI in November last year. How many have tried it? Raise your hand, don't be. Yes, it's pretty cool, right? It's interesting, it is, it's been compared to like man, women finding fire. But if you think about the first generation AI as curation, this new one, this generative AI is creation, right? It is creation and there are still no guardrails. And again, the responsibility of protecting us is left in the hands of the people rushing ahead for profit. What you may not know is that a few months before that release of the generative AI last year, a survey in Silicon Valley among the people who work with AI showed that 50% of them believed that if they released what they were working on, as it is to the public, that there is a 10% or greater chance that it will lead to an extinction event of us, they can't control its evolution, right? So, okay, that's bleak, <laughs> um, but we can't give up. And the reason I'm telling you all of these, don't worry, I won't leave you depressed, I promise, <laughs> um, is because you have to be prepared. This is the battle you are walking into today, and boy, do we need you. We need your energy, your optimism, your commitment to justice, as Karen said, your global views. Don't complain about your government or corporate bureaucracy or the UN moving slowly. They do. <laughs> you gotta jump in and change it. At the time of exponential, exponential change, you have a unique view that we need in this battle. 
because it begins with you. Your search for meaning. Because when tech has atomized meaning, you have to work even harder to define what is important to you. What gives your life meaning? The lesson I learned, mm, 10 arrest warrants in a little over a year and a half, right? The lesson I learned is that you don't know who you are until you're forced to fight for it. Until you fight for what you believe in. This defines who you are and I will say we are in for a battle. That you are here means you've found some answers, you've made some decisions, but there are more. It will change exponential, exponential. So three ways that you can live your way into evolving answers. I can't begin to tell you how much things have changed for me between 2016 and 2023. One, draw the line for your values. Two, embrace your fear. Three, build a community, but beware the mob. So draw the line. Every choice you make defines who you are. And they could be really simple choices like turning right or turning left, but you know, it takes you down a different path. Or accepting a bribe, because in your mind, you've rationalized it's a gift. Or if you're a tech mogul, saying that the genocide in Myanmar has nothing to do with social media, despite what the UN and the Meta reports say that Facebook enabled it. Character is created in the sum of all these little choices we make. Now, while you're sitting here, be clear. Choose the values that define you. Do it now. Because when you're tested, and it will come if it hasn't already, you have to know the lines you've set. Draw the line where on this side you're good and on this side you're evil. That will prevent situational ethics. That makes sure you can't rationalize greed or bad behavior. Think back to this moment in time. Two, embrace your fear. I've been asked a lot, aren't you afraid? Well, yeah, of course, <laughs> you know, there are these moments, but I've learned that fear spreads and it's debilitating. Fear is a luxury. If you're in the middle of chaos, you need to stamp down your fear so you can have clarity of thought. That's essential so you can make the right decision. People will try to coerce, manipulate, intimidate, or threaten you to get what they want. Often they have a lot at stake. Often it comes down to power and money. You have to be clear what you're afraid of because those are the buttons they will push. So, whatever you are most afraid of, imagine it, touch it, hold it, embrace it, then rob it of its power. Because once you do that, nothing can stop you. It took me a little more than a month to deal with the the fear of jail, the fear of violence. I hated that the baton, you know, as a news head, was passed to me at this moment in time. But I also knew that I wasn't going to drop it. That's where courage comes from, from a small decision, a simple choice. I'm not gonna drop the baton, and that's my commitment. Third, beware the mob. This is the worst of who we are, of human nature, and social media is doing its best to fan that flame inside you, right? It is inciting fear, anger, hate, tribalism, us against them. These is what 
this rewards to keep you scrolling, right? So the more it sees that, that's what we're swimming in. Remember, lies laced with anger and hate spread faster. They form lynch mobs. That is by design. So switch out of thinking fast to thinking slow. Fight for your best self. Know that no matter how much of a superstar you are, you can't accomplish anything meaningful alone. So build and strengthen your community. Let me leave you with a lesson from Rappler. And this is data from our civic engagement experiments that show us that, yes, fear, anger, hate spreads faster. But guess what emotion spreads as fast? Inspiration. Inspiration spreads as fast as anger, as fast as hate. So don't dive into this. Believe in the good. Believe we can be good, right? I'm gonna leave you with one of the toughest moral choices I've had to make. And this was decades ago. So I was still CNN's Jakarta bureau chief. In the final days of the Indonesian military scorched earth policy where they were killing pro-independent supporters. This is in Timor-Leste today, right? In Timor. My team and I were about to leave the capital, Dili. It was before dawn, so it was still dark, to drive to Suai, which was about four hours away by car. I was told there had been a massacre, that the hundreds of people who had taken shelter in the church were being massacred then, and the priest, Father Hilario, was a friend of mine. He was a Filipino priest. We were about halfway there when we stopped for gas, and a man, a friend, a source, came running to our car. He asked me for a ride back to the capital, to Dili, because he said he was being hunted. I'd never seen him this agitated. He said he feared for his life. I couldn't turn the car around because we needed to go to Suwai, right? We needed to get the story. I couldn't bring him with us because it would take him directly to the military, to the police, and it would make all of us vulnerable. So I thought about what's our first responsibility? To get the story. We, were the f we had a global audience. We needed to get you the story. So I told him, and this happens in seconds, right? I told him, we would come back, we would pick him up that evening on our way back to Dili. We got to the church, there was a massacre. It was a long, grueling day. When we drove back, we got to our designated meeting point an hour late, so I stayed an hour longer. He wasn't there, and only later I would find that he had been killed. 37 years as a journalist. There are many choices like that. And, and I always ask myself, did I do the right thing? In situations of anarchy and war, it is hard to distinguish right from wrong. There is only your mission, the purpose you are there. So draw the line. Embrace your fear and beware the mob. We are living in science fiction times. And our fate is in your hands. I think I shouldn't say congratulations. I should say welcome to the battlefield. Sleep well tonight. Because your dreams, you have to dream of a better future. It must get better, right? Despite the bleak battle you are entering, oh man, we can't give up. And you are coming into the fray. So dream of a better future. Then when you wake up tomorrow, go and make it happen. You go, class of 2023.
you. Thank you, Maria. Your example, your courage is a real inspiration to us all. And now I am pleased to introduce um, Kirsten Imoisen, co-chair of the SIPA Alumni Association and a member of our class of two member of a, our class of 2003. Kirsten is a model alumna, a longtime volunteer and alumni a leader whose dedication to our community and to her fellow graduate is beyond compare. Kirsten, thank you for joining us today to help welcome SIPA's newest alumni. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Ressa and Dean Garahimilo. It is my great pleasure to be here today with the extraordinary class of 2023 to congratulate all of you and welcome you as SIPA's newest alumni. While graduation celebrates the completion of your degree, it also marks the beginning of your new engagement with the world beyond SIPA. Your SIPA education has equipped you with much of the knowledge and many of the skills necessary for success, but whatever your objectives, ultimately it will be up to each of you to achieve your goals. I am pleased to tell you that SIPA's alumni community can be of help. Your SIPA degree brings with it a unique network of more than 23,000 alumni in over 150 countries, all of them united by their shared experience and desire to make the world a better place. As the co-chair of the SIPA Alumni Association, I welcome all of you to this vibrant and diverse community and encourage you to stay connected with each other and with SIPA. With this in mind, the SIPA Alumni Association is pleased to present each of you with a small graduation gift which will be available for you at the reception immediately following this ceremony. We hope that this memento will invoke fond memories of your time here at SIPA and will remind you to stay in touch and keep us updated with your contact information and any exciting personal or professional developments you wish to share. The SIPA alumni community is eager to know you and to help you, so please be involved with SIPA and play an active role in the Alumni Association. Connect with fellow SIPA graduates through Columbia's regional clubs and SIPA communities around the world or on our online alumni community. Volunteer your time to share career advice with current and admitted students. Come back to campus for the annual Alumni Day and your class reunions, and join us for inform informed discussions and networking at Columbia and SIPA with alumni events around the world. Most importantly, as you embark upon your newest journey, always remember why it was that you chose to attend SIPA and the remarkable faculty and staff who helped to guide you, the outstanding students who challenged or inspired you, and the loving family and friends who stood behind you. On behalf of the Alumni Association and the SIPA alumni throughout the world, welcome to our distinguished community and congratulations again on your extraordinarily, extraordinary accomplishment. It is now my privilege to introduce Courtney Manning, who serves as the 2022 president of SIPASA, SIPA's Student Association. Courtney graduated this year from SIPA with a Master of International Affairs, concentrating in international security policy and specializing in conflict resolution. She is currently a program assistant at the Arnold A. Schwarzman Institute of War and Peace Studies at SIPA and will soon join American Security Project as a National Security Policy Fellow on Military Red Readiness and Climate Security after graduation. Please join me now in welcoming Courtney to the podium and to SIPA's alumni community. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten, for that introduction. And thank you, Dean Yarhimilo, Ms. Reza, and esteemed guests for celebrating this momentous achievement with us. I'm Courtney Manning, graduating SIPA class president. I am proud to not just congratulate a class of world-class graduates, but to stand among the most driven, empathetic, and personally inspiring individuals I have had the pleasure of meeting. The class of 2023 forged a new legacy on campus and set an incredible precedent for what students can accomplish in times of uncertainty. It is now my pleasure to introduce my fellow classmate, 
Kat Sawan O oh, to share some remarks with you. Kat is graduating with her Master of International Affairs degree with a concentration in human rights and humanitarian policy and specializations in technology, media, and communications, and in the region of East Asia. Please join me in welcoming Kat Sawan O oh to the stage. Thank you, Courtney, for that kind introduction. Thank you, Dean Yari Milo, Ms. Ressa, faculty, and loved ones for being here today to celebrate the graduating class. And a special thank you to the mothers here. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> I am so grateful for this opportunity to speak. And congratulations to SIPA's class of 2023, because we've made it. <laughs> My name is Kat Sewon Oh. I am a woman of color, I am queer, and I am disabled. I grew up poor in Flushing, Queens. Getting a master's degree was something I never dared dream. Except that's what SIPA does, foster dreams. Today, I'm a human rights advocate. Thank you to the many professors who've imparted great knowledge and skills to me about how to protect the rights of all humans across the globe. Today, I'm a communications expert. I want to specially thank Hagar Chamali, my capstone faculty advisor, Anya Schifrin, the TMAC program director, and Jim Holty, my speech writing professor. It's actually thanks to Professor Holty's class, which has extremely high demand every semester, that I learned all the speech know-hows that got me onto this stage today. <laughs> and today, I'm one member of a blessed community, you, the graduating class of 2023. Shout out to all the future leaders here at SIPA, in government, in NGOs, and the private sector, all here to change the world. And thank you to all the friends I met here for making me feel loved and supported. You made me feel at home. There's someone else I want to thank. As everyone here knows, grad school is rewarding, but so, so difficult. Sometimes we get so absorbed in school life that it's hard to stay grounded in real life. Thank you to my partner, Matt, who's watching from bed sick, for making sure I don't forget to eat, for helping me push through despite my disability, for keeping me grounded. But most of all, I want to thank my family. You see, my parents are immigrants who barely speak English but managed their own grocery store on 23rd and 8th in Chelsea for over three decades. Their hands were burnt by the deli grill and scarred by rose thorns so that all my hands had to do was write and type. They let customers yell racial slurs at them so that I can stand with dignity. They supported me all the way through grad school. One time, even driving me from Flushing all the way to SIPA when all the trains were canceled right before my capstone midterm presentation. But there's one loved one who couldn't make it here today. My aunt, or in Korean, my emo, passed away from pancreatic cancer in my third semester. Emo was the one who taught me the importance of pursuing my dreams. When I thought applying to SIPA was hopeless, Imo convinced me to do it anyway, because she knew, she knew dreams are boundless. Everyone, you're here today because you chased your dreams. Now, here's my ask of you. Don't let those dreams stop here at graduation. Keep chasing, keep moving. There's so much lying ahead waiting for you to catch up. This graduation 
is not the end of the book, just the end of a chapter, a chapter that will lead to so much more. And may the next chapter you write and all those afterwards bring you fulfillment and joy. Let me conclude with what my emo always said to me in Korean. 이때까지 해왔던 것만도 자랑스럽고 앞으로 무슨 일을 하든 자랑스럽다. I'm proud of everything you've done up to this point, and I'll be proud of everything you do in the future. Thank you, and once again, congratulations. <laughs> now I'll turn it back to Dean Yarhi Milo. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Courtney and Kat for speaking today. It is now time for us to read the names of each of our graduates by degree program. Yay! Yay! All right, leading us, leading us off, I am pleased to welcome Professor John C. Mutter, Director of Graduate Studies for SEPA's PhD in Sustainable Development. Thank you. Uh, it's a real honor to be uh, able to start this profession, procession of graduates from the program. Yes, every one of you will have your name read out, believe it or not, um, uh, exhausted as we might all get. I have the privilege of beginning this with the graduates of the PhD program in sustainable development for this year. It is the world's first, uh, the world's best, uh, PhD in sustainable development, the most rigorous uh, that there is, and our graduates are amazing people for getting through them. Uh, this year, we have a relatively small class uh, because it's a five-year program, and it takes a little while to get through the COVID years. So just wait, next year, we're gonna be huge. <laughs> so I'm gonna read the, uh, the names of the graduates, uh, the title of their dissertation, and where they've been placed, what jobs they they're, 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 they have. And that uh, allows me to uh, take a moment to thank our uh, placement director, uh, Kiki Pop-Ellish, who uh, for the last two years has, uh, despite all odds, <laughs> placed our whole program's uh, graduates in, in terrific jobs. Now, despite, and I'm gonna, Shut up in a minute. Despite, despite the fact that the, the number is very small, I want you to pay attention to the gender diversity, the ethnic racial diversity, and the diversity of the positions they've obtained. So, um, first, Jin Ming Du. <clears throat> who wrote on oh, essays in environmental economics, uh, she'll become an assistant professor in the Department of Economics at the National University of Singapore. <laughs> and next is Solomon Goffier, uh, who wrote on <laughs> three essays on human capital. He will become an associate in the private sector at the analysis group in Los Angeles. That's it for me. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Suya Yi. I'm the, I'm, I'm the Associate Dean for Student Affairs, and it is my honor and pleasure to begin reading the names for the candidates for the degree Master of Public Administration. Aisulu Jilkai Darkazi Abdrakmanova. Rania Abdulkader. Shireen Nasser Abu Khalil.
Mansi Agarwal. Zuchi Ai. Farah Al Adsani. Beskan Alim Kulu. Muath Al Katani. Ahmed Al Rashid. Mosele Shufena Ambarita. Jose Pablo Ampudia Setos. Parvati Arti Anamalai. Alize Arif. Hart Aurora. Mesa Ashab. Rawan Basam Asiri. Shashank Atreya. Maria Camila Avila Franklin. Altinai Bayanbek. Ariadita Balakrishnan. Nicole Balarezo Ortiega. Shali Baloch. Nitansha Bansal. Risha Bansal. Emily Bedoin. Heba Beg. Hermanoski Bernard. Radhika Bambi. Sara Bambri. Gabrielle Blackman. Thomas Zachary Zinzan Boak. Adrian Bober. Edward Bonahue. Phoebe Amelia Bauer. Isabella Brandes. Dennis Brevenitz. Tessa Brown. Kevin Brunelli. Araberto Castaneda Vidal. Lucia Castablanco Narvaez. Diego Castrillon. Valentina Castro Rojas. Agastia Chesteriakara. Sindura Chakravarti. Rolando Shapiro Uziel. Michelle Chow. Mengchi Angela Chen. Siting Chen. Yu Chen. Kelsey Chin. Sung Ho Chong. Carolina Cortez. Rosario Contese Blanc. Alejandrina Correa. Stephanie Koch. Alexandra Clark. Sarah Cohen. Shauna Cole. Isabella Cretura. Ray Tsui. Antonella Davi. Stephen De Jesus. Daniel De La Torre Velasco. Maria Francisca Dewey. Christopher Kane Dolan. Miloni Doshi. Zoya Dakam. Shuchi Ding. Yu Tian Ding. Lu Ching Do. Rodrigo Ezagiri Miraglia. Zachary Fallon. Yushuan Feng. Louise Carnegie Foster. Stephanie Fox. Sophia Fulton. Carly Gallo. Cristobal Garcia Quiroz. Matthew Garrity. Indra Gautama. 
Ulaya Gemper Tirani. Trevor Graney. Joseph Alexander Grokmal. <laughs> Gu Jian. <laughs> Xing Yu Gu. Anna Sofia Guajardo Gutierrez. <laughs> Wang Yo Go, Guo. Sachi Gupta. <laughs> Lucas Gusman To. Xinhui Han. Manasa Hanuma Rao. Audrey Hatfield. Ariel Esther Herman. Elizabeth Horowitz. Diego Herrera Tellez. Shione Hirayama. Andrew William Hoffner. <laughs> Shui Hu. Elizabeth Hudler. <laughs> Jing Chi Huang. <laughs> Kate Hyun. <laughs> Shruti Jane. <laughs> Maliha Jamal. Kalista Elvina Jesslin. <laughs> Bavia Ja. <laughs> Promise Yetunde Joshua. <laughs> Tom Jove. <laughs> Jia Hui Ju. <laughs> Sakshi Kapoor. Ermela Abate Kasaye. <laughs> Rebecca Kaufman. <laughs> Kairan Kao. <laughs> Toshia Kawada. <laughs> Megan Kelly. <laughs> Nadia Kairani. <laughs> Summer Khan. Ansa Khan. <laughs> Christian Koenig. <laughs> Veronica Koziel. <laughs> Nick Kraft. <laughs> Evelyn Elizabeth Kramer. <laughs> Ivy Kwong. <laughs> and now I invite Professor Andrea Bubala to continue reading the names for our MPA degree candidates. Ignacia Ricaros. Claire Lee. Lily Yejin Lee. <laughs> bai Hui Lei. <laughs> Greta Linarta Vichute. <laughs> Nathaniel Levin. <clears throat> Jiashun Leila Lee. <laughs> Ching Hang Lee. Shui Li. <laughs> Shu Yu Li. <laughs> Shang Li. <laughs> Shung Li. <laughs> Inong Li. <laughs> Yuku Li. <laughs> Wahan Amber Liao. Nina Lu. <laughs> Cheng Liu. <laughs> Xu
Shu Shan Liu. Si Yu Liu. Ji Yu Liu. Javier Lopez Paños. Mu Yao Liu. Shi Wu Yu Liu. Iris Liu. Selena Ining Ma. Yue Ma. Ivan Mahardika. Malik Ishfak Khan. Elisa Jordan Markowitz. Manuela Marne Popolo. Kaho Matsuwura. Sebastian McAteer. Gillian McBride. Marisa McCasson. Morgan McMary. Jagannath Melacheruvu. Christine Meparishvili. Anne Catherine Mertz. Magda Miller. Ji Hyun Min. Surbi Muhan. Maris Montalvo Lopez. Monica Mora. Claire Morley. Alexander Nashev. Kabir Natkarni. Jihan Zehar Najim. Yoshiaki Nakazato. Roshni Nedungadi. Joseph Neely. Caitlin Nelson. Ni Young. <laughs> Anya Nielsen. Koichiro Nishihata. Naoto Nishiyama. Ana Nogueras Perez Santa Marina. Anissa Nursetia Otami. Caroline Jean O'Leary. Takayuki Omori. Sebastian Orozco Sanchez. Shriya Padillar. Randy Satya Padmanava. Malika Pal. Christian Palencia. Roy Pan. Jun Su Park. Rasika Parky. Tirtha Patel. 
Cassidy Pearson. <laughs> Zhao J. Peng. <laughs> Kyle Pickett. <laughs> Théophile Pouget Abadi. <laughs> Archana Prabhakar. <laughs> Matteo Prada Quintero. Ananya Prakash. <laughs> Haider Indra Pramana. <laughs> Liktor Prianti Leal. <laughs> Olivia Quill. <laughs> Thais Kroku Kinelatu. Victoria Rassiati. <laughs> Enrique Radler. <laughs> Pallavi Rajan. <laughs> Sangeetha Ramanathan. <laughs> Mario Ramirez Mendoza. Nikhil Ramnarayan. Jorge Andres Ramon Salas. Shalini Rao. Devangi Rathod. Paloma Ricaño Morgado. Vanessa Rugova. <laughs> Mayan Shaher. <laughs> Maynardo Francois Rukai. <laughs> Arshita Sakamuri. <laughs> Rodrigo Salinas Jordano. Devan Shamant. <laughs> and now invite Gillian Rodriguez, Associate Dean for Diversity and Community Engagement, to continue reading the names for our MPA degree candidates. I don't think that boo was about me. Marina Santos Vicente. Ulysses Santonio Vega. <laughs> Fritchi Mayang Sari. Mighty Sadorso Aragon. Yotowa Sawada. Sunakshi Siksuyu. Marcelo Sakurman Muller. Rianti Septi Ani. Sujana Seti. Prashi Maya Umesh Shahara. Shane Kuna. Lee Shur. Yang Shur. Noga Shapovirsky. Kalud Abrahad Nitshu. Puja Singh. Ruhi Singh. <laughs> Abri Swava Singha. Christopher Smith. Shara Somach. Zara Spencer. Julia Species. Vashni Radia. Bogdan Stoba. Naru Hiko Sugira. Norawich Sutirahi. 
Puraka Zukun. Good Finner, Zenville. Rachel Nataya Adelman Swat. David Sweetman. Miklad Arahmi Tapesh. Awi Takashi. Roger Antonio Tahada. Dakesh Tucker. Suhel Singh Tanghi. Kiyam Tian. Singyi Tian. Melissa Toman. Kanak Lata Trapati. Natisha Trapati. Indu Ungbanpati. Sinaha Ugbati. Koko Usami. Alandro Tomas Valles. Andre Vega Monero. Maria Veronica. Daniela Vitri Kuchotu. Kumar Viek. Joshua Wan. Chi Wan. Tian Chi Wan. Elena Wee. Gideon Wissman. Jason Williams Bellamy. Yi Wong. Zawing Wang. Tabasha Wantabi. Kevin Singran Wei. Rachel Williams. Ambrose Wong. Sibai Wu. Jinghang Sha. Yihan So. Suen Show. Shuwen Valencia. Mui Kamanyaka. Shaling Young. Kixan Wu. Shaling Young. Chin Yin. Diego Unagra. Christopher Yu. Sharon Zada. Sharing Song. Yamang Juliet Yang. Yongsing Zhang. Yongsing Zheng. Yichang Zheng. Zuhang Zing. Sherry Zhang. Zingtong Zing. Zahao Bawa. U Zayo. Jawa Zu. Tian Zhou. 
Thank you and congratulations to the graduates. Good evening. My name is Glenn Denning. I'm the I'm the pr I'm the I'm the proud director of the MPA in Development Practice. And, and I'm, I'm very pleased uh, to introduce the immensely talented, hardworking, and very loud graduates of our class of 2023. Zainab Abdi. Tanya Goyal. Rhoda Ibrahim Al Naimi, <laughs> Muhammad Haikal Adani Kusuma, <laughs> Emma Addington, <laughs> Anushka Bansal, <laughs> Mona Lisa Barman, <laughs> Rishav Bhattacharya. Paulina Bustos Alanis. Paola Kala Ortiz. Nachari Net Chamapalin. Nikita Chetri. Barbara De Barros. Alison Dodekian, Michelle Fayad, Mohammed Rifki Febrian, Niall Aziza Hosset, Emily Fung, Kanika Gandhi, Nora. Gobriel, Dima Hamuda, Alexia Ip, Ip Iotis, Aranza Zhu Hokiera Johnson, Pranati Kohli, Ana Paula Lamas Ovanta, Ovando, Ovando. Rebecca Chai Lambert. Muazu Muhammad. Gataraj. Madeline Nino. Muhammad Farid Noruzi. Chiwudi Wana. Tochi Tochukwu. Koye, Titileo Esther Ola, Neka Chinelo Onyeka, Prachi Paliwal, Emily Park, Vruti Patel, Sesek Badam Purev Suren. Rohini Ram Mohan, Aparajita Rao, Sunidi Rao, Gabriel Rater, Asha Janai Richards, Gisela Romero Hernandez, Caroline Sanjoyo. Beryl Sila, Eki Gumpa Simanjantuk, Buddy Siruno, Daniela Tagle, Estefania Tena Alonso, Tet Ta Tet, ben <laughs> Benjamin Tim. Katarina Vidotto.
So good evening, everyone. My name is Trish Mosser. I am the director of the MPA in Economic Policy Management. And it is my sincere pleasure to introduce the multi-talented, incredibly hardworking, uh, loud, uh, um, like everybody else's graduates of the 2023 Pippin program. Isham Alshari. Carlos Abuha Kehon. Uzochukwu Olutu. Katsumi Arai. Nagubar Raman Atir. Emiliano Cabrera. Rohit Chala. Varsha Dare. Chingwa Dorji. Abhiva Duda. Monica Duran Rosales. Richard Estrella. Hideharo Imai. Hong Hong Lian. Nibil Makari. Nerim Bizi Mumvungu. Mashu Namiki. Ayu Nihe. Aman Oktafi Adi. Chikondi Piri. Ubijit Muspuriyut. Kritna Janathan. Bharat Singh. Nuntanid Thongshri. Jean-Pierre Fundemarve. Brianne Watts. Yongshi Ji, Liang Yu. <laughs> You're not there? Oh my God. Excuse me. Don't worry. Maximiliano Verrama Espinosa. Uh, good evening. My name is Steve Cohen. I'm the director of the MPA Environmental Science and Policy Program. It's my honor to recognize the graduates of the MPA in Environmental Science and Policy class of 2023. They're the 21st graduating class of this path-breaking program. That's the only environmental policy program in the United States requiring a semester of environmental science. And I'm confident that these spectacular mission-driven students who are now graduates, like their predecessors, will do nothing less than save our planet. Malaka Aluri. I don't know. Candice Asari. Alma Bauer. Sarah Bryan. Diana Boonhe, <laughs> Matteo Chedopiat, <laughs> Erlis Choi, <laughs> Nicole Cornell, <laughs> Ipsita Dash, <laughs> Lauren Farmer, <laughs> Courtney Federico, <laughs> Carrie Fernandez, <laughs> Joao Francisco Fernandez. <laughs> Sylvia Gan, Rafe Gani, Ishan Ghosh, Elena Gressley de Jose Paisa, Hannah Harasaki, Man <laughs> Mansi Gupta, my workshop manager, <laughs> Oliver Hickey. Tal Hennig Hadar, Pauline Josefsek, Sian Lee, Morgan Lehman, George C. Lea, Vanessa Lincoln, 
Veshi Leo, Ezekiel Meben, Erin Machada Kwok, Haley Mall, Kao Tien Ni, Kelly O'Connell, Christine Au, Bevan Pan, Olivia Parker, Duve, Duvove Patal, Mel Pei, Sun Za Chu, Julia Grace Sanders, Emma Cease, Emily Singham, Eric Smith, Holly Sullivan, Kasturi Thurat, Katiana Wardana, Brett Whelan, Tiffany Wu, Sinyan Wu, Yeye Wu, and Kate Zabinski. Good evening. My name is Bill Emick, and I'm the director of the EMPA program, and we're very proud of our 23rd graduating class. Reem Alamar. Manuela Hiam Poleta Alves. Lynette Azules. Gabriela Barajas. <laughs> Fanaza Biom. Mark Butterwin. Edward Vogel. Jennifer Burden. Jacqueline Meocho. Cam Camocho, excuse me. Zitao Chen, Anne Chuezi, Elizabeth Coulter, Jeffrey DeMars, May Rundell, Irvitz Dinkle, Odiwan Chua Isabelli, Jutine Fan, Colleen Fitzpatrick, Angel Flesher, Mark Golder, Kiel Gorman, Ziway Gole, Errol Jones. Paul Sengun Jung. Chiung <laughs> Kim. Eliana Kraus Piper. George Cusero. Kenneth Lewis. Thomas James Lusinger. Marielle Villar Martinet. Rizarta Mahai. Maura McCauley. Julianne Maselli. Tanya Motley. Steve Nagel. Tawiloma Obashi. Jacqueline Okio. Catherine Zen Pena. Chiren Chi. Daniela Raposo. Jack Riley. Rosa Santos, 
Ivy Schultz. Alby Shale. Jonathan Jack Hines Smith. Denisa Tamarez. Dario Vasquez. Yuxing Wang. Michelle Angelique Wilson. Mengzi Wu. Sha Wu. Liang Shu. Mayfei Su. Wei Yong Jong. Dan Zhao. Judy Zhu. Thank you. Good evening and congratulations to you all. My name is Hazel May. I'm the Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, and it is my honor and pleasure to begin reading the names of the candidates for the degree of Master of International Affairs. <laughs> Natasha Agnes. David Emilio Aguila III. Najla Aklifi. Andres uh, Felipe Almeida Gomez. Jawara Almere. <laughs> Alec Apostwe Ai. Marisi Abribo. Tawana Arin. Julia Lenore Arik. Ayona Bakil. Sorry? Ayona Bakil. Yeah? Shivani Basil. Patricia Basilchik. Itama Ben Aron. Keith Jacob Bernardes. Bermuda, sorry. Riley John Blackwell. Manuiti Boissard. Sophia Bonilla. Kendall Brennan. Lauren Elizabeth Guina. Barushka Caravaggio Fontevecchia. Uh, Tom Cassily. Amelia Claire Chatham. Alison Chen. Chow Yang Chen. Neil Chin. Grace Chio. Paloma Chacero Delgado. James Cole. Ciara Comerford. Cinnamon Cornell. Julia Anderson Crane. Victoria Cabello. Josephine Delant, Sophia Dagoret Martinez. Betul Demira. Chiao Hai Do. Matthew Donovan. Gillian Taylor. Elizabeth Edgar. Heba Lubabi. Todd Etheridge II. Juan Camilo Fafan. Joshua McKinley Taylor Fife. Catherine Flanagan. Ariana Friedman. Teruya Fujisaki, I apologize. Shi Rei Gao. Sophia Lucinda Garcia George. Mihail Hernan Arido Leca Palacios. Sarah Gathro, Rudrani Ghosh, Mitra Giridar, Ethan Henry Goldstein, Fernando Gonzalez, Fidel Gonzalez Pará, John Gulandris, Kelsey Green, Leandra Grisot, Sumya Golati, Jennifer J. Inhan, Chimai Haska, Christopher Hernandez de Seos, Leanne, sorry, Leah Lynn Hickett, 
Camila Hidalgo Moreno, Taylor Alyssa Hinch, Tamara Hoffman, Heli, sorry, Hannah Kelly Haupt, Jashwan Huang, Anna Hunanian, Erin Kelly Isles, Jacob Undersky, Michael Irving, Mariam Maron Ishia, Canyon Iwami, James Lowell Jackson. I now ask Professor Tom Grohl to, to continue reading the names. Sophie J. Jashank Eureka. Payuk John G. Yunbei Zhou. Jude Jordan. Julia Yulstrom Agoyo. Susanna Calaris. Sean Kulau. Yi Ho Kang. Julie Caparari. Nika Karimo. Iman Karimu. Toby Casali. Maria Katzman. Liam Tay Kani. Louisa Kian. Reed Kessler. Taiki Kitauka. Kate Knight. Dorothea Kuhn. Gali Kuyomyaji Yan. Tenzin Kinsom. Jessica Imiko Loka. Laufa. Olise Lavoy. Ryan Lee. Sojin Lee. Timothy Lee. Clara Lee. Wa Leon Lee. Pingjang Lee. Jenny Lee. Si Yao Liu. Si Jang Liu. Mary Long. Maria Cristina Lopez. Gianyu Ma. Oliver Magnuson. Isan Maribiban. Basim Maliki. Umira Manvi. Courtney Manning. Brandon Mapes. Cecilia Bounscott Markman. Caroline Maroom. Gina Massino. Marie Mavievios. William Maxwell Mayo. Khadija Megjani. Orlean Dragos Mohan. Ricardo Modalfi Salmon. Leonard Charles Moxley. Christoph Muller. Maggie Munz. Emma Murray. Dominica Nahayuti. Ryu Nagai. Anjali Nair. Mohamed Naja. Spencer Nash. Cyrus Newland. Alessia Noboa. Natrick Norvig. Morgan O'Hara. 
You can call me Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. Katsi Won O. He Won Park. And uh, now I invite Alexandra Sanford, Chief Operations Officer, to continue reading names. Eric Payerly. <laughs> Ferdinand Pehamberger. <laughs> Angela Peterson. <laughs> Lacey Pierre. <laughs> Antoine Pitard. <laughs> Sophia Posada Parker. <laughs> Liberty Potter. <laughs> TJ Pizek. <laughs> Wenjing Winnie Chen. Jin Chu. <laughs> Walier Rahman. <laughs> Theo Dotson. <laughs> Leonie Rawls. <laughs> Andrina Ray. <laughs> Rocio Redondo Alamillos. <laughs> Grant Reynolds. <laughs> uh, <you're laughs> Sorry. Valerie Reynoso. <laughs> Emily Teresa Rice. <laughs> Aina Rizvich. <laughs> Daniel Rocha Correa. <laughs> David Romero Siegman. <laughs> Sebastian Bruce Rosatano. <laughs> Theu Hugh Dow. Aditi Rukhayar. <laughs> Mohammed Salahuddin. <laughs> Father of Jackson. <laughs> Justin Sankara. <laughs> Camila Santibanez Paris. <laughs> Takuro Sazaki. <laughs> Maggie Schechter. Dove Scheindlin. <laughs> Teriaz Skoko. <laughs> Shahaf Segal. <laughs> Muhammad Ali Sen. <laughs> Milan Shah. Joseph Shelsey. <laughs> Rosie Shretta. <laughs> Sean Singh. Belle Pavine Shripa Pluet. Julia Schneider. <laughs> Riship Sonkar. <laughs> Stacy. Oh, Allison Stasioski. <laughs> David Steinfels. <laughs> Abraham Sterling. <laughs> Daryl Tan. <laughs> Noah Tan. Humna Tarek. <laughs> Carissa Teputri. Shona Tadari. Kevin Thor. <laughs> Yoni Metav Tobin. Tala Vahabzag. Arisa Vituntian. K1. Jinshin Wu, Mina Watanabe, Juliet B. Weiss, Nicholas Wilkinson, Minkun Bruce Wu, Yue Shi, Yunnan Yang, Chen Yi Yo. Caroline Jean Lon Yu. <laughs> Catherine Alexandra Yosko. <laughs> Silvana Zapata Ramirez. <laughs> Hao Qin Zhang. <laughs> Zhao Ming Zhang. <laughs> Daisy Gang Zhao. 
Xiaobo Chao. Jinjiang Zhou. Erpu Ju. Fengwei Zhou. Dawilet Isa Suilem. Thank you, and congratulations to the graduates. You did it! Congratulations, graduates. And now, please join us for a reception on Ansel Plaza. Thank you. Friends and family, thank you for joining us. We ask that you exit as promptly and as safely as possible this evening. You can meet your graduates on the upper campus at Ansel Plaza.